So we are less than three weeks away from the Bimini trip. What in the world have I been doing to get ready for this? Hey everybody, this is Captain Frank with the ship's log and man, I am excited. We're literally less than three weeks away from the Bimini trip. This is an epic trip, going to be an epic trip of a lifetime. And as you can already imagine, there is a lot more you have to do to prepare for a trip like this when compared to just going for a ride on your ski on the lake. So I've been doing a lot of things obtaining a lot of equipment and stuff that I'm gonna need for the trip, making sure that I'm well prepared for it. So what have I been doing? Let's go take a look at this. Um, I've been piling up stuff in the garage, planning stuff, making sure that stuff's operational and so on and so forth. And I'm gonna spend the next few minutes just going through the things that I have been doing, the things that I've purchased, the things that I've uh, prepared and how I've prepared them uh, so you can see you know what I've been doing you might even have some suggestions for me um, Or if you plan on doing a trip like this yourself in the near future Then of course that gives you a starting point to figure out how you want to prepare for yours So what I've done is I've broken the things that I've done up into three different categories uh, the first category is um, Things that I'm doing for trailering the jet ski down to Florida from from where I am to where we're gonna be putting in the water is about 675 miles one way. So all in all, we're doing 1300 miles round trip towing a jet ski. So obviously you wanna make sure, you're hoping nothing goes wrong, but you know, the fact is something could go wrong. So you wanna be prepared for that. So that's the first category. The second category I'm gonna cover is all of the items that I am going to be needing for the actual crossing over to Bimini and the crossing back, uh, safety equipment and so on and so forth. So uh, that's mostly stuff, of course, for riding the ski. So that's the second category. The third category uh, is going to be uh, other stuff that I'm gonna take. Obviously, I'm gonna take some clothes and things like that, but you know, how am I gonna take those? And also some of the things that will be nice to have if I can actually fit them. Uh, the key, of course, here is I'm doing all this on a jet ski. So uh, everything I'm taking with me has got to fit in the jet ski or on me or in somehow it's, it's the jet ski is gonna be what's taking that across there. So obviously I'm very limited in space and weight. Um, so that's gonna be really interesting. So uh, it's not like you're packing for a vacation uh, to where you can take two or three bags with you. Just can't do that. So um, let me talk about the decisions that I've made and the things that I'm taking. I definitely welcome your comments. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so for the first category, uh, these are all things that I am taking uh, to just hopefully uh, be able to handle any situations that might pop up while trailering. Hopefully, of course, we don't have any issues. Hopefully it's a smooth ride down and a smooth ride back, but you never know. So um, these are what I'm gonna be taking in my truck just in case there are any issues. The first thing, of course, obviously a spare tire. You should always have a spare tire, uh, not only for your tow vehicle, uh, but for your trailer as well, uh, just in case you do get a flat along the way. So we will be taking a spare tire. Um, this bin right over here, uh, most of this stuff, except for the spare tire, is actually gonna go in this bin. So this bin is just what I carry in the truck whenever I'm towing the jet ski trailer. It's got all this other stuff in there. Uh, so it's just a, a really easy way uh, to, to put it in and take it out of the truck when needed. Uh, right here I have a couple of jack stands. Uh, again, if I do have issues with the trailer, um, then I have jack stands I can put the trailer up on to, to switch a tire out. Um, the vehicle, the tow vehicle uh, jack that I have, that will easily work to actually uh, jack the trailer itself up. But if for some reason I have to leave it 
um, up for a, for a bit, then I have jack stands to do that. I also use these sometimes, you've probably seen this in previous videos, where if I'm parking my jet ski trailer overnight somewhere, just to be extra safe, I'll take the tire off and put it up on a jack stand. Makes it a lot more difficult for somebody to um, get away with it. Doesn't make it impossible, because if somebody really wants it, they can get it, but it definitely makes it more of a challenge. Um, this right here, I have an impact wrench. So uh, again, if I gotta change tires, take a tire off or whatever, then uh, I've got an impact wrench to do that. Um, obviously you can do it with a, a, a regular wrench, but uh, that just makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker. Got some rags, uh, lock. Of course, this is actually to lock the trailer onto the tow vehicle. Uh, again, doesn't make things impossible. Actually, I've got a couple of locks here. Doesn't make it impossible, but it definitely makes it uh, more of a challenge. I do have some stops. So uh, again, if I've got to disconnect the uh, trailer from the, dope, the, uh, from the tow vehicle at any point for any reason, I don't want it to roll away. So there you go. Uh, I have an extra tie down strap. Uh, you probably know that you should be tying down your ski to the trailer uh, at the stern of the ski. Uh, there's one that stays on the ski uh, or stays with the ski all the time, but that's just an extra one in case something happens uh, to um, the main one. Uh, I have a grease gun and some extra grease, of course. That is to make sure that I keep the bearings uh, well lubricated on the trailer. Uh, so that I don't have any bearing issues along the way. Uh, this hose I actually keep with all my trailer stuff. This is so that I can flush the ski out uh, at the end of a ride. So if there's a water source I can find somewhere, hook the hose up to it, flush the ski out, we're good to go. And of course, extra bearings and an extra hub. Again, these are things that we are definitely hoping we don't need. But if for some reason you do have a, um, a problem along the road, uh, the last thing that you really wanna have to do is to try to find the part that you're looking for. Hopefully you have it with you and you're not gonna have any issues as a result. So that's all of my trailer stuff that I take with me. And um, let me know what you think about that. But now we're gonna go on to the next category. All right, so for this category, we are talking about all of the things that I feel that I need for the trip over uh, or for the trip back. Um, so all of the gear, whether it's safety gear or, or just stuff that I think I'm gonna need uh, for the long trip over and the long trip home. Of course, a lot of it I'll also be using while we're running around uh, the Bahamas over there as well. But um, first of all, the first thing I wanna mention is GPS chart plotter. You don't see it here because that is actually mounted onto my ski and my ski is actually up at the lake right now. Um, but if you follow my channel, you probably saw a video that I did, I think it was back in October of 21, where I actually installed uh, my uh, Garmin uh, chart plotter. Uh, so uh, that's on the ski, of course, so that's obviously going to be something that I have with me uh, for navigation purposes. It also tells me depth and a bunch of other stuff as well. So the next thing, of course, gotta have the life jacket. Um, I actually bought this life jacket just recently, just for this trip. One thing that I liked about it is that it has um, a lot of places to stow stuff. It's got a lot of pockets on it. It's got a place to put your radio. It even has a GoPro mount. It's got the whistle. It's got lanyard loops on it. So um, it, it's got a lot of stuff. Plus it's got some safety features like reflective tape on it and so on and so forth. Um, I thought it would be great for this trip um, because I'm obviously gonna be uh, carrying more stuff than I typically do when I am jet skiing. So uh, looking forward to using that. Uh, yellow flag, of course, when you first check in to the Bahamas or before you check into the Bahamas, you must actually fly a quarantine flag. Uh, once you've actually checked in through immigration, then you can uh, take the quarantine flag down and then you're able to, uh, to go where you want within the Bahamian water. So got to have that. Uh, this, of course, is just to protect the cell phone. It's one of those waterproof pouches. 
Uh, you can put your cell phone or anything else that'll fit in there. Uh, it'll protect it from getting wet. Uh, so that's what I got that for. Uh, this is right here is a PLB. This is a personal locator beacon. Um, you can buy these, you can buy them online. I got this one at West Marine, uh, but there's a lot of different types out there. This one's made by ACR. But the way these work is if you find yourself lost and you need help, uh, whether it's on land or whether it's at sea, um, you can actually pull this out, hit the button, it actually connects up with satellites, sends a signal, um, which lets them know where you are and they can come help you. So um, obviously we're going with a bunch of people. Uh, last check, I, I think we had something like 27 jet skis and two boats. So it's not like I'm out there by myself. But again, just one of those things you take for, for safety. Take, take all the precautions you can because uh, you want to make sure that, that you actually come back. So um, when you do get these, you do have to register them. Um, so you don't just buy it, you buy it, you register it, they know who it belongs to, so God forbid if everything happens, uh, or, or something happens and you have to push that button, they not only know somebody out there needs help, they actually know who it is as well. Of course, uh, gotta have a radio. Uh, again, this is a good tool to have for safety purposes, in case you need to reach anybody, but again, we're going with a large group, it's also a way for us to keep in contact and communicate with each other. So uh, this particular radio actually has uh, an input where you can actually connect an external microphone to it, microphone and speaker in this particular case. So my plan is to, the radio will be attached to my life jacket, uh, the microphone and speaker will be actually be on my shoulder uh, for easy access to where I can hear and I can also talk. So, got to have that. Uh, sunglasses, of course. Um, depending on what the weather conditions are, if the weather conditions are uh, a little nasty, I actually have uh, a pair of goggles in here. So, hopefully the weather's going to be beautiful, the waves won't be too much, uh, but if it gets kind of nasty, then we go with uh, we with the goggles to kind of keep the water out of the uh, out of the face there. Um, some gloves, some riding gloves. Um, these gloves, of course, uh, they keep your fingers out, but um, they give you uh, a nice surface on the palm, which actually allows you to grip. The thing about riding long distance on a ski. Um, is especially if you're riding fast, uh, you, you got to hold on, obviously. But what this allows you to do is allows you to keep a good grip and control without feeling like you have to clamp down on your handlebar. So um, it, it allows your hands to relax a little bit more uh, on a long trip. So got a pair of those. Just a simple toolkit. This is not even a marine toolkit. Basic simple toolkit. Again, hopefully you don't need it. But if something does happen, might be able to make uh, very simple uh, fixes or you know tighten a bolt up or whatever it might actually be. Uh, this right here, obviously we've got to carry some additional stuff, so I needed to get additional help to do that. So I actually ordered uh, this from uh, Super Rack. Uh, and this actually allows me to take an additional cooler so I can put drinks in here, snacks in here, whatever, and an additional five gallons of fuel um, on the back of my ski. Um, I'll actually put a picture up there so you can actually see what it looks like. It's obviously not on the ski now because like I said, the ski is up at the lake, but um, but allows me to carry extra fuel, also some drinks and stuff along the way. Um, and of course this, um, this allows me to actually siphon fuel uh, from here into my tank should it be necessary. Now, my ski can actually make the trip all the way over without having to refuel. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it actually should make it over and have quite a few gallons left in the tank. But again, one of those things you just don't take any chances. Doesn't hurt to have an extra five gallons on board uh, just in case something unusual happens or who, who knows. Or who knows, maybe somebody else might need some. But um, I think pretty much everybody that's going with us uh, should make it on one tank. Um, but again, we're just being safe. So those are the things that I've got for the actual trip over, the things that I need. Some of them I actually take on um, a regular everyday jet ski ride. A lot of them I don't, but I will definitely be taking 
on this ride. So let me know what you think. If you have anything that you think I should, I should add to this category, um, definitely comment down below and let me know what you think. But now we're on to the next category. Okay, so for the third category, uh, these are things, pretty much everything else, stuff that I'll be using while I'm over there, um, or maybe things that uh, I'm taking simply as a result of the type of trip that this is. Uh, first of all, a couple things, lines and fenders, I keep on the ski all the time. So I, I don't have them here on the table in front of me because again, they're on the ski. They're always with the ski. So, but I will have lines, I will have fenders. Uh, I also typically keep an anchor on the ski. As a matter of fact, there is one on the ski right now, but I did get a different anchor for this trip right here. Um, this is an anchor that I have not used yet, but I've heard a lot of good things about it, um, that it works really well for skis. Uh, I got this particular one on Amazon. Um, after I've had a chance to use it, I'll, I'll definitely uh, get back to you guys and let you know what I think of it. But I've got the anchor, seven foot of chain, and about 50 feet uh, of line. Uh, which for most cases over there should be should be plenty. Um, I am thinking about putting uh, a, a clip on the end where I can add more line if necessary, but that's what I've got right now. I've also got cables and locks so that when uh, at night when we have our skis uh, parked at the dock or in a slip at the dock, we can lock it up. Um, just to make sure that it is secure. The one thing about going to Bimini is a lot of insurance companies won't insure a jet ski when you go to another country. They'll insure a boat of a certain size or more, but they will not insure a jet ski when you go to another country. So just an extra precaution. I really don't think I have to worry about it. It's not like there's a bunch of crime there or something, but again, just to be safe so uh lock these up at night when we're at the dock my clothes of course i will be taking in a dry bag um yeah i could probably use a regular duffel bag or a small suitcase or something and that would actually fit in the forward compartment uh of my ski but those types of things aren't really designed to keep everything dry a dry bag is actually designed to keep the contents dry. Um, notice it's not huge. It's surely not the same size as a huge suitcase, but again, I'm going on a jet ski. I have to fit everything that I'm taking in my jet ski. So uh, fortunately the condo where we're staying does have a washer dryer. So literally what I'm thinking about is, hey, I take enough clothing for a few days and you know what, we're talking shorts, swim, uh, swimsuits, shirts, a hat or two, there you go. Uh, I'll do laundry after a few days and that'll take me through the, through the rest of the week. Um, I put these up here because I actually went out, these are water shoes. I actually went out and bought these water shoes and tried them and I actually like them. They're actually quite comfortable. I've ridden them a couple times now or I've worn them a couple times now where I, uh, when I've gone skiing, jet skiing. And um, I like them. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that this might actually save me some space because it obviously works well on the jet ski but they look like you can wear them pretty much anywhere else that you can, you know, wear casual stuff. So I might get away with just having one pair of shoes and it'll be the shoes that I'm wearing as we ride over. So that'll obviously save me some space as well. Um, they're not very expensive. I got, again, I got these on Amazon. Um, I can tell they're not as durable as like if you went out and bought a pair of sneakers. But uh, hey, again, all I need them to do is last through this week and I'm good. So again, I'll let you know what I think about these once that trip is over. Um, the other thing I'm actually gonna take, which again is, is currently on the jet ski, um, I don't think it really matters, but I am gonna probably have a couple of bottles of Octane Booster. Um, my jet ski is supercharged, so it does require uh, at least 91 Octane. Um, it's probably not going to be found in the Bahamas. So obviously I'm going to have 91 on the ride over, no big deal. This is not a trip for us to be riding at full throttle the whole time. So it's not like we're really going to be putting that supercharger to use a lot, although we might a little bit. Uh, so I'm taking a couple of bottles 
just in case. I typically don't like to use Octane Booster a lot. I would prefer to just go ahead and put 91 Octane Fuel in it. Um, but I'm, I'm taking a, a bottle or two just in case I feel like I need it and then maybe I'll use it. But, but pretty much that is it. So um, it, again, if you've got suggestions, if you think there's something that I have forgotten then please, please comment below or, or tell me, you know, if you've done a trip like this before, you've done the same exact trip before, um, tell us, you know, what you took that you did use, that you didn't use. Maybe if there's something that you you didn't take that you wish you had taken, whatever. Uh, maybe I'll get a chance to see it before I actually go and it might actually prompt me for uh, to, to, to take something else that I need to take. But uh, also, of course, oh, one last thing I forgot. I'm taking my cameras. Uh, I can't, again, the cameras are not sitting on the table right now because I'm filming with them. I actually have two cameras sitting up here right now that I'm filming with, but I am taking my GoPros. Um, I also am taking, uh, uh, you know, obviously stuff, you know, for storage of the video and so on and so forth. Um, that's all going to be in waterproof containers, but uh, again, the cameras are, are being used right now, so I can't show those to you. Uh, but yeah, I will be taking those. Obviously, I'm going to be filming. So if you do want to uh, see the adventure, uh, then please make sure that you subscribe because uh, I'll have more than one video coming up uh, on the, the Bimini trip. And uh, I'm expecting it to be an absolute blast. And, and I would love to take you along with me. So uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, please like the videos because it does help me out. And uh, let's get excited. Until next time, be safe and happy riding.